Okay, I think we might get started now, if everyone's ready. So thank you very much for joining us for this webinar um, following the film showing tonight. Um, my name is Eva Watkinson and I'm the head of campaigns at Jubilee Debt Campaign uh, based in the UK. Um, and I'm joined tonight by Alejandro, who is the director of the film uh, that you just saw and is also an economist and journalist for about 20 years, I think, um, and presents a range of TV shows and radio shows in Argentina. Um, and Beverly uh, Keane, who is from our sister organization, Jubilee in Argentina, um, who campaigned not just on debt, but I think on lots of other economic justice issues as well. Um, so she's also gonna be joining us for this Q&A. And Joyce, who is uh, from Action for Argentina UK, um, who's going to partly be representing Action for Argentina, but also partly helping with the translation uh, as we go along. Um, so yeah, Joyce, I don't know, did you want to start by just saying a little bit about your organisation? Um, and then I think, and then we'll go to Alejandro and Beverly. And oh, and just to say sorry, so I'm going to be, I'll look at, if you have questions at any point, please put them into the Q&A or the chat, we can't hear you. Um, but I will facilitate the questions as they come in and flag them to our panellists. Perfect. Thank you, um, Eva. Yes, we, um, I'm here in representation of Action for Argentina UK. We are a um, diverse organisation. We've been active for two years now. Um, we're a very plural, diverse organisation. We have people of, of all ages taking part in various campaigns. Um, we, there's academics, um, trade unionists, workers, activists, artists, scientists. So um, we are supported by um, Argentina, by many Argentinian people, by many British people. We have uh, a lot of reach in, in both countries. Um, we work to strengthen relationships between Britain and Argentina. Um, and we also work very closely and unitedly with the Latin American community here in the UK. Um, we are, our emblem, our sort of flags are human rights and environmental rights. So that's all the campaigns that we've been involved in um, really revolved, um, revolve around that. Um, and within the, uh, within the work that we do for Argentina, UK relationships, we really say strongly um, no to any colonialist policies that we see take place. Um, so we, we support all kinds of causes as well um, around the world that, that are to do with human rights and environmental rights. Um, so you're, you're, welcome, you're welcome to join us as a supporter from, from where, whatever background, whatever community you're from. Uh, we're on social media, we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter page as well. Um, I can post the links in the chat later if, if people are happy for that. So um, it's, it's good to see you all here and we're really excited. Thank you. Beverly, do you want to say anything about your organisation? I think, yeah. I guess we can kind of turn the mic on. <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, Joyce, Eva, Alejandro, it's great to, to join you. Uh, I form part here of an organisation called Dialogue 2000. Uh, we are one of the founding organisations of the Jubilee South Network about 20 years ago now. And as Eva was saying, we work together with Jubilee UK on, on many issues and also with Action for, for Argentina. Indeed, uh, the, at this time, we form part of a, a broader coalition in Argentina, which is, uh, has a name, it's impossible, I think, to translate something like, um, let's try an open call for the suspension of payments and investigation of the debt, something along those lines. Maybe it gives a sense. Uh, which a um, hundred or so organizations are participating. Many of them are human rights organizations, trade union groups, a lot of uh, neighborhood uh, organizations, lots of groups that work on environmental rights, uh, because we also feel very strongly, of course, that the debt is an issue of human rights. It's an issue of environmental rights. Uh, it's an issue of uh, colonialism. Uh, and so our call for suspending all payments is very much linked to our understanding that the debt is fundamentally illegitimate. In many of its, in many of its parts, it's also illegal. Uh, it's a, a fraudulent debt. It's an odious debt. And it's certainly not the people of Argentina who owe that debt. Uh, and so that's why we say that there needs to be a stop in payments. 
we said this before the, pandem the pandemia uh, broke out, but uh, in these circumstances of tremendous social and, and sanitary uh, emergency, uh, we think that that call for debt repudiation indeed, for debt cancellation, for investigation, for stopping payment uh, is more acute than ever. It is more urgent than ever because we need those resources to support life, to support people's basic needs uh, for food, uh, for health care, uh, and we can't afford to have those resources uh, being drained out of the country, and particularly so knowing that that process is a fundamentally illegitimate and unjust process that's been going on for years. And really, this is a time to say, we've got to halt, we've got to do things differently. So we're very happy just to join uh, this evening. Uh, we've shown the film uh, many times in Argentina with uh, local groups uh, as part of the educational efforts also in our own country. And I just wanted to simply say that we had a meeting this afternoon just coincidentally with uh, about 40, 50 organizations and networks throughout Latin America and the Caribbean and have just taken a decision to, to join together in some common initiatives over the next few months and including uh, the call for a week of action here in Latin America and Caribbean on the debt and the international financial institutions before the next annual meetings, which I think will take place in the middle of, of October. So we're talking about a week of action, maybe from like the 10th to the 17th of October. And I'm sure we would be extremely interested and hopeful that in the UK and in other countries around the world, uh, you might consider joining such an action because we know we, we need that strength, all of us together. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's definitely talk about that. Um, okay, I'm going to hand over to Alejandro now. Um, I think if you wanted to say a few words and then I'll move us into the questions. Okay, yes. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Beverly. I uh, also thank uh, Dan Osaro uh, and all the people who have been organizing and, and putting together this. I, am, I, I felt uh, quite frustrated by, by the pandemic because I was about to, to show the film in Madrid, in Barcelona, uh, in, <laughs> in Berlin. Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't match uh, for for going to London as well. But but I I, I would have I would have loved it. I, I now we are we are here in in a in the middle of a, a very strong isolation. It's uh, we are in the in the peak of of the of the contagion here in in Argentina, or, or at least what what I hope becomes the peak because we are having 3,000 uh, confirmed cases uh, every day. So it's a lot, uh, uh, even, even for a country uh, as big as Argentina. So we, we've been through this, this, uh, this last four months, three, four months, uh, before we, we had the, the change uh, of between both administrations, the, the Macri government that you may have noticed how, how it ended uh, in the movie. Uh, well, it ended and it, it, uh, it gave the place to, to the new administration of Alberto Fernandez. And now we are in a special, uh, really special moment uh, heading to the ending of of the of the process of renegotiation of the private debt, but after this, uh, which if you want we can discuss here in the in the Q and A, uh, we'll have the uh, renegotiation with the fund. The fund uh, is the main uh, creditor of Argentina after the Macri's government, and we now have to, to address that negotiation with a, a very different uh, management of the fund, but with the same spirit that led the fund since Argentina started to, to relate with it, uh, as you may have seen in the late 50s, so very after the, the fund was created. 
Argentina has a, a unique relationship with the fund that you may have noticed also in the in the uh, movie, and that has to do uh, with the history of crisis that Argentina has, especially after the the last uh, military dictatorship. Uh, well, uh, that. Uh, headed Argentina also to the war with, with Britain. So that dictatorship reshaped the, the Argentinian economy in many ways, but the main way was uh, installing the debt as uh, one of the principles that guide the macroeconomic process of, of uh, accumulation here. I mean, the, the, the state, uh, and the private companies uh, charge the weight uh, of the of the debt since the, since then, and uh, all Argentinians know uh, since we are born that we carry that weight all, mm. all our lives. So it's uh, it's not a, only a, a colonial instrument for the the powerful countries to to keep poor countries like this or middle income countries like Argentina like this, but also I think uh, is a way that rich classes and, and, and the, the, you know, the, the, the VIP uh, owners of, of the Argentinian economy keep poor people as they are. So it's, it's a, a mechanism I, and I would like to readdress this in Spanish so I can I can do it more fluently. Uh, it's a, 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 a both ways mechanism, uh, a mechanism of domination uh, from outside and also inside because it leads to the uh, uh, the adjustments, the, the, the macro adjustments that you uh, may have noticed in the movie. It's, it's a, a permanent presence in the Argentinian discussion, uh, in the political discussion, what to do with the debt and what to do with the rest of the money that mm. is left after paying the debt. So it's like a, like a how you say, a, a, una condena, a Joyce? A, 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 una, es una condena de, 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 de nacimiento. Una, una marca. Something that comes at birth. Claro, claro. De nacimiento es, es una herencia que, eh, eh, bueno, eh, que, que marca a todos los argentinos. Do you want to say any of that in Spanish <laughs> quickly before we uh, get into the questions, or, or we can go? Yes, so yes, can yes. Talk about as well. Yeah, I, I, I'd rather answer the the questions, the questions in Spanish. Yeah. Spanish okay. because I I'll be I'll be more specific I imagine mm. in the answers I'm sorry about that but it's no no it's I, perfect um okay so let's go to the questions now I think I maybe start with a question from Viviana um he says uh, they really like the film um but just a basic question uh, wants to address how, how are the debts created? <laughs> so that many people here in the UK uh, have the impression that there's always irresponsible governments uh, who, who are kind of building up the debt. Can, can you say, yeah, can you say Alejandro or then maybe Beverly as well, just, just um, yeah, where, how do the debt, where do the debts come from in the first place? Yeah. Mira, eh, es, es muy interesante esto porque sí, siempre está eh, flotando la idea del origen irresponsable de la deuda, del gastar más de lo que se tiene. Por eso, como herramienta pedagógica, eh, nosotros apelamos a las estatuas, eh, a las estatuas vivientes, eh, para tratar de desarmar ese, ese prejuicio eh, y explicar por qué el Estado es una construcción social que media en un conflicto, que es el conflicto de clases, el conflicto que, que, que marca todas las sociedades, y en ese carácter eh, eh, siempre termina arbitrando en favor de uno o de otro actor social. Y eso, eh, bueno, es lo que lo diferencia justamente de una familia. No es que nos endeudamos porque eh, fuimos eh, irresponsables en el manejo de nuestra casa, como le puede pasar a un particular, 
eh, sino porque se tomaron determinadas decisiones en, en la Argentina, a partir sobre todo de la instalación del neoliberalismo con la última dictadura, que llevaron a que ese mecanismo de dominación se profundizara. Yeah, would you like, Joyce, would you like to give the translation to that one? Yes, so um, the question was, yeah, how, how would that's created? So um, Alejandro said this is a very interesting question and the idea of the irresponsible origin of the debt um, is always is always floating around, um, but as a, as, a, as a pedagogical tool and as a structure, um, he, he likes to, um, to spread the teaching that basically the state is the arbiter um, in society and the state decides in its in its decisions and its mechanisms who wins and who lose who loses in terms of when a debt is um, is incurred um, so that's what differences it from from the family which which the film also made quite a lot of emphasis on that it's it's not the same as a family Para ponerlo, perdón, para ponerlo más, eh, más claramente eh, y para poner un ejemplo también del último, del último gobierno, eh, la, la penalización que eh, se estableció sobre Argentina por su historia de mal pagador de deudas hizo que eh, todas estas últimas deudas que se tomaron durante el gobierno de Macri fueran a una tasa de interés del 7%, mientras, por ejemplo, Alemania paga tasas negativas por bonos a 20 años. O sea, lo que eh, los grandes financistas le prestan a tasa cero a Alemania, eh, Argentina se lo prestan a una tasa del 7% en dólares. Eh, el promedio de la tasa mundial fue durante todos estos últimos años 2%. Entonces, los financistas que le cobran 2% al promedio de los países y 0% a los países ricos, Argentina le... le eh, piden 7%. Por supuesto que hay gobiernos irresponsables que toman deuda al 7%, pero parte del origen de la deuda acumulada en capital son esos intereses cristalizados en capital a lo largo de los años. Si a vos te cobran 7% por año, lo capitalizás, es eh, un montón de, de plata, y eso es lo que pasó en estos últimos especialmente. Mm -hmm. Yes, so to, to add to that explanation, um, Alejandro said that there's also been a, a penalization uh, to Argentina by the IMF for, for being um, bad at paying back. So the interest um, imposed on the debt is of 7%. Uh, to compare it with um, what happens in, in, in different parts of the world, um, Germany gets, gets no interest in, in the debts that it gets um, as a powerful developed country and also the global average interest rate is 2%. So we can really see um, the uh, different treatment Argentina gets in a negative sense. And that's, um, that's become crystallized throughout history and it's, parts, it's, it's also part of the, of the origin of debt as well as irresponsible governments that are willing to mm. accept those terms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Beverly, I don't know, is there anything else you wanna to add to that? Maybe just very quickly, I think it's also very important to think that it's not just the responsibility of our states who, uh, who emit the, the debt or go into debt, but very much the debt is, is a product of the, the need and the push uh, in global, of global capital for higher and higher uh, profits. So uh, even when we speak of the dictatorship and the debt in, in Argentina, as Alejandro was, was mentioning, it's very clear, it's very documented uh, that uh, the volume of debt that went to Argentina was uh, a product of the tremendous liquidity that existed uh, internationally. And uh, yeah, who's going to invest in 2% in interest when you can get 7% interest in Argentina? So mm -hmm. that push for capital and the push for indebtedness in Argentina and throughout the South comes much more from the, the lenders than it does uh, from the needs of the, the, the countries and the peoples who, who become indebted in the process. So it, it's very important, we always think, to, to link uh, the, the levels of debt in countries like Argentina with the levels of profit that are accrued uh, elsewhere in the system far from the hands of those of us who, who end up paying those debts. Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Um, I think I'll just ask, we sort of covered a little bit of this, but um, I guess there's a the sort of joint question of then why do countries go to the IMF or why does Argentina go to the IMF? And then I get someone else asked, um, I was sort of like, why can't you just do a Portugal and um, get out of the debt? <laughs> So just maybe a, a tiny bit more on that, just that dynamic. Eh, el, ¿Por qué los países van al Fondo Monetario o por qué Argentina específicamente? Why Argentina specifically? The question is, the question is um, governments, but I think you cannot say for Argentina. Eh, el, el, los gobiernos terminan en el Fondo Monetario después de agotar toda la capacidad de préstamo que tienen los grandes fondos de Wall Street. Eh, terminan en el fondo porque el fondo es el prestamista de última instancia y es el que, en definitiva, garantiza el repago del de dinero que los grandes fondos ponen a esta tasa de interés altísima en países como Argentina. Eh, trabajan en conjunto, muy en conjunto. Eh, fue el fondo, como vieron en la película, la caja de resonancia de las potencias del G7 y la que cristalizó eh, el dominio de Estados Unidos sobre la economía mundial en la posguerra, pero también es una correa de transmisión de los grandes bancos de Wall Street. Fíjense, por ejemplo, eh, que el Fondo Monetario, en este último lustro, volvió a la Argentina, volvió a Ecuador, después volvió a Bolivia, ahora, de la mano del golpe de Estado de, de Janin Áñez, eh, e inmediatamente los eh, fondos grandes de inversión acudieron a prestarle muy fuerte a esos países. Ecuador ahora está renegociando su deuda privada, igual que Argentina, que está renegociando su deuda privada, eh, y ambos eran supuestamente buenos alumnos del fondo cuando se suscribieron los, los acuerdos hace nada más que dos años y medio, hace muy poquito tiempo. Esta fue una crisis muy acelerada, muy, muy vertiginosa, eh, y por eso el gobierno de Macri también es el primero que entra en default de su propia deuda. En general, los gobiernos eh, argentinos que, que declararon un default eh, lo hicieron con deudas que habían contraído otros gobiernos anteriores. Esta crisis tiene una velocidad vertiginosa y por eso estalló incluso antes de que terminara el gobierno de Macri. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, Alejandro said that uh, governments go to the IMF as a as a last resort usually um, when they've exhausted all the options for the big lenders in in Wall Street. Um, so the IMF almost it, it, it works in tandem with with private sector lenders and almost almost guarantees that these lenders will get will get their money back. Um, and it almost acts as a he said what he called a transmission chain for big private lenders um, and he gave the examples of, of Bolivia and Ecuador so they've been examples of good students of the IMF in the way they've they've supposedly managed um, their debts um, but Argentina is a good example of, of a very speedy vertiginous crisis um, because of the exponential growth of the debt in, in, in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you. Um, I think I'm just going to move to another question now. So, um, yeah, kind of looking forward, uh, John's asking, what has the position of Argentina changed since the film, which I think we talked about a little bit at the beginning, but maybe we could say a little bit more about um, what's happening, what's happening right now. And I guess with that as well, um, I'd just be interested to know if the dynamic has changed at all. Now we have Cristalina in at the IMF, like, you know, I'm sure Possibly not, but you know, just that with there's a new there's a new set of characters, I guess, that are um, you know in in the current negotiations. Um, so yeah, where are we now? And what's changed? What's happened? Y bueno, la relación con el fondo. I, I will start in English and I try to to answer it in English, so we we avoid the the time of the translation. If if I need a, a word, I will ask it for you, uh, Joyce. Thank you. Uh, uh, the, the, the relationship with the IMF has never been cut. The government has changed, Macri is gone, is gone and now we have a Peronist government, which is a, a coalition of different parts of Peronism or 
I am more wing uh, left wing related, more uh, right wing related. I mean, uh, different parts of the Peronism, which is a, a very complex nationalist movement uh, of Argentina that I will not explain in this in this webinar because it, it will take hours and hours. Uh, the thing is that the the government has changed, and the IMF stays. The IMF has changed its, its ways and its uh, main characters, but it stays and it's uh, the main creditor of Argentina after this uh, renegotiation that it's taking part now with the, with the private creditors. The question, uh, in the interest question, the in interesting question to make, I, I think, is if the fund has really changed as the new government is saying to us, because the new government, uh, which uh, started repeal, repealing the the economic policies of the of the one that took place before, started by saying that the IMF was co-responsible for this uh, indebtedness uh, of uh, of uh, Argentina, this this unique process of of uh, of indebtedness indebtedness you say yeah endeudamiento in, in yes. uh, and the thing is that be after that the, the fund started aiding argentina to press the private creditors and in in these six months that the new government has in in office the IMF with Kristalina Georgieva in, in, in one way recognized its responsibility because uh, it, uh, it said and it admitted that the debt that Argentina took in the last four or five years was unsustainable and they before said that it was sustainable. So they are admitting that they went wrong with Argentina, very wrong, because they backed two packages of lots of money coming into Argentina, money that flew out of Argentina because the, the government that they backed and they supported uh, removed all the barriers that avoided the capital flights. So they said to the to the Macri's government that they were right in removing that barriers and now they say they were wrong by saying that and they admit that they were complices they were they, they were also complicit. yeah also complicit with the with that with that situation but that admission still has no relation with a uh, condonation of the debt, uh, 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 a relief of the, of the debt that the fund uh, uh, still, still holds for, for Argentina. So uh, I guess the IMF will show its more imperial role and its, its ugly face again in a few months when we get to negotiate again with the IMF, because uh, differently than what the private creditor, uh, the private creditor does, the IMF uh, not not only asks for money but also asks uh, countries to do what they say to do, and I'm not sure that Kristalina Georgieva. Uh, Despite its, uh, despite her her uh, speeches uh, on inequalities and and you know the, the the ugly things of of global capitalism, I'm not sure that she will break the tradition of the IMF in being uh, an instrument of the domination of our countries. I, I'm I'm quite keen on thinking that she will be quite the same than Christine Lagarde and quite the same than Dominique Strauss-Kahn and quite the same than Rodrigo Rato and quite the same than Michel Candesus and all the, the, the former managing directors of the IMF. 
the, the government seems not to believe this now, and that's why they, I, I, I don't think they, they like my movie uh, that much as they liked it when they were campaigning last year. <laughs> Things happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, thanks for that. I just a related question um, from Dan, which is both for Beverly and Alejandro. Um, so the, he says it's coming up to 20 years since the Olmos ruining. Uh, that deemed a large part of Argentina's debt to be odious and illegitimate um, and public audits and then cancellation of illegitimate debt had some success in Ecuador a few years ago. Um, yeah, and also recently some debt has been deemed illegitimate in countries like Iceland. Um, I guess as a slightly different approach is the delivery of something like almost still possible today. Um, and I don't know if, yeah, Beverly, do you want to maybe start on that one? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I was just thinking, in fact, because we're preparing an activity for Monday, which uh, will be the 20th anniversary of the historic judicial ruling in, in Argentina uh, on this case against the debt that was accumulated beginning in the, in the dictatorship. So it was a legal case that also took 18 years to be completed. And the sentence is very interesting in, in the deed that, that it uh, goes through and shows uh, all of the evidence, both from domestic sources and from international sources. Uh, it, it documents very clearly the, the illegitimacy and the fraud uh, of the process of indebtedness during the dictatorship. Uh, I won't go into those details now, but uh, one of the things that the sentence doesn't do is condemn anyone. It doesn't sanction anyone. So this is an evidence, uh, it's a very clear case of, of the continuing impunity, uh, which we fight against uh, constantly in Argentina. So we have a clear case of the crimes in a sense being proved. And in this case, the judge said, well, in some cases uh, they've all prescribed, uh, despite the fact that we continue to, to pay the consequences uh, of those crimes. Indeed, we say that the crimes continue because the debt that we pay today is a continuity. It's directly, it's a direct continuum from the debt of, of the dictatorship, as, as Alejandro was, was saying. But I wanted just to mention also that uh, as preparing for this act on Monday, I was looking at some of the old materials from that time, and in particular a film that was produced then on, on the, the trial, it's on the, the case itself. And one of the things it does in it, uh, one point in the film is produce a lot of the headlines from that time. Um, we're talking about to the year 2000, uh, which was a year, a year and a half before the, the economic collapse uh, in Argentina. And you look at all the headlines and it said they could have been from yesterday. You know, IMF uh, supports uh, Argentina's bid for uh, a new loan. Our IMF uh, supports Argentina's uh, proposals for restructuring at that time a part of the debt. And, and so what, you know, simply we see, and we could even go back to the dictatorship, the, the IMF uh, together with the US government were the first two to recognize the government produced by the military coup in Argentina in 1976. And the first thing that the IMF did was to make a loan to the government. Uh, the, the government of the military dictatorship. And when it made that loan, just two days after the military coup in Argentina, it, uh, it did recognize that indeed the, the previous government, the elected government had been negotiating a potential loan with the IMF for some months. Uh, but it was only after the military coup that the IMF agreed to make the loan, saying that now there is political stability in Argentina. So it, this is, a, there's a long history and, and the people change, as Alejandro was saying, the circumstances change, but the institution and its role in, in continuing this reality of debt domination uh, continues today. So that's uh, why we also think it's time for the IMF to go. Uh, it's time for a global economy to really recognize that what was set up by the US uh, at the end of World War II is not something that functions on behalf of the needs of people, 
uh, on behalf of our human rights and on behalf of environmental rights, uh, it, it, it needs to go. And we as, as people and as popular organizations, as countries around the world, need to be seriously addressing the question of what kind of institutions, what kinds of, of new mechanisms uh, can really help to protect uh, our rights and not just to funnel resources into the hands of a few. The 1% have uh, more than enough. They don't know what to spend the money on. And it's the 99% that, that really need to, to be protected in an international system. And the system today doesn't function that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Alejandro, anything, anything to no, add? No. No, yeah. I, I, it's it's all all was said by by Beverly. I, I, I fully agree. It's it's uh, it, we we need to think uh, about different organizations, about different multilateral systems, about different systems in our countries. It, this is a this this is a multi multi level multi sector multi sectorial crisis. It's a, a, of course, it's a sanitary and economic crisis, uh, as uh, as we as this generation has never witnessed. But it's also a social crisis. It, it, we've seen that in in the riots in in the U.S. against racism, racism, uh, and we we've seen it in Europe. You know, all all big uh, protests taking place. We we see it in in Hong Kong. We see it in in, in many places that uh, that are that are protesting uh, against this disorder because the, the pandemic only only showed what we already had it's it's not something new and the IMF is part of that what what I what I may add is that we we never expected here at least here in argentina we never expected the imf to to behave as it was uh, uh, an institution uh, uh, protecting uh, people's interests uh, we we always have seen the imf as uh, an instrument of domination and it's that and it, it, it's it's always been that now, now we we can we can uh, uh, ask for for that or we can we can show that it's not uh, uh, a multilateral institution for for the good of all but we we, we can never uh, forget that it was born uh, to do that it was born to do what it's meant to do and what it does it does all, all the time mm -hmm. cool thank you I mean, um, uh, one, one, uh, I, uh, there's a, um, uh, an anecdote that may, may show this to you. Uh, one of the, the people that I interviewed in Washington, and it, it didn't went in the movie, uh, was one of the latest directors, um, board directors, not managing directors, but member of the board for the U.S. And he said, uh, well, if you negotiate with the IMF, you are on our team. It's like, it, it's like a, a club. It's like a, um, you, you, you belong to, to the Western uh, hemisphere, or to, the, to Western capitalist uh, economies, if you are in the IMF. And the, the alternative, before the, the 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 fall of the of the wall of Berlin, uh, was to rely on the the, the communist countries, uh, and after the fall of the wall, uh, now it's to rely on uh, bilateral uh, loans by China or Russia, and and the U.S. thinks the IMF as a, a weapon against that kind of diplomacy against that kind of of, of uh, relationship with, between countries uh, and they say it's better to to owe the imf and not to owe china because china will will ask you for more in exchange of that money but the thing is that as as all empires 
they they want to share of your of your uh, excelente mm. of, of your of your uh, production your your mm. your profits your your economy and they uh, they get to to take it by different means if if you have the imf in the middle it's it, it takes the the shape of uh, an agreement and policies that they recommend to you uh, if if the, the the relationship is more bilateral uh, it may take the shape of uh, an, an investment uh, or or a, a, a project specific by, by that country funded by that country and also uh, uh, charged after by that country but it will it will always end the same it will always end in a drain of resources from the debtor to the creditor it's that the, the phenomenon is that mm. okay thank you um, i'm just going to do a couple more questions and i think we're going to have to kind of um wrap up a little bit i'm afraid um so i guess and some of the questions we were having were should we get rid of the imf so I think you guys have answered that. <laughs> um, the I guess yeah. Another thing um, that people were building up, were bringing out, was just how has the film gone down? How has it been received in Argentina? Um, which you touched on a little bit at the beginning, but how what impact has it had? Um, and how has it been received? Um, and also I think uh, just in the kind of theme of. Um, uh, kind of discourse that's happening at the moment and um, we've had a question about what's and what alternatives are and kind of different things that are happening a question from uh, Sebastian that's what's your opinion on the speech of ultra liberal economists like Adorni, Espert, uh, Gia Camini etc um, he can see lots of his friends sharing stuff so um, yeah I guess how's how, it do you, how, how do they get uh, how do they get there um, uh, 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 Sebastian. Uh, I don't know. Ma magic of social media. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the well, they are the, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> the the movie was very very uh, well received. I, I'm very happy because I, I was traveling all around Argentina last year. I went to well uh, uh, to, to many cities here, and and it sh it was shown. Uh, on, on plenty of, of cinema centers, uh, it, it uh, had a, a last chance in television because the the, the news channel in which I I work uh, also screened it, and there we had I, I know but uh, a, a couple of hundred thousand people w watching it, so it was more in those that day of tv you know it's very hard to 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 uh, to bring people to cinemas and and stuff now now we miss them but <laughs> when we had them we, we didn't use them a lot so it, it was uh, uh, quite a quite a, a phenomena here we we are very happy about the the repercussion and the discussion with the discussion with this kind of, of uh, what what Marx would call uh, pseudo economists or or vulgar vulgar economists. I, I know if you say vulgar, yeah, vulgar, vulgar. Yeah. Is is a, a is something that uh, really really uh, worries me because uh, as in Britain you have uh, I don't know if I have his book around here in my library no i have a book uh, of one british activist with we who's called owen jones uh, i'm sure you know him uh, yeah well yeah. Uh, he's he's very 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 uh, accurate uh, in in discussing with the new new technologies and new and new languages audiovisual languages with this uh, angry right, uh, the 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 angry uh, uh, what I call the, the yellowing uh, right wing, the the, the 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 more brutal 
uh, which uh, which success is mainly the simple arguments that are, that are presented to teenagers mostly teenagers who haven't paid a, a, a rent or a, or a tax in their lives because they still live with their parents but they need that kind of simple argument which are really uh, easy to understand uh, to form their uh, opinions on very complex uh, situations or uh, systems like this like the external debt or the IMF and with that kind of simple arguments they succeed in inoculating very very dangerous ideas of selfishness uh, and and uh, well and, and uh, and solidary and, and solidary uh, uh, policies and, and ideas that they uh, after that they they reproduce so uh, it, it's something that i i speak and i discuss a lot with colleagues here in argentina that we need to to fight that ideas in their own uh, in their own field which is the field of the social social networks and the short videos we need to decomplex our ideas so uh, that the next generation won't take these arguments as, as science because it's not it's ideology in the worst uh, the worst uh, sense of, of the of the of the term it's false conscious false conscious and that false conscious is is uh, what leads to this kind of of, of very bad people uh, to to address young uh, young activists and young uh, well teenagers and and, and students uh, with these ideas of, of selfishness and and the you know the in in a way it, it's suicidal because it's the generation who who will be in charge of saving the the planet I mean this pandemic. We'll, after after this pandemic, we we will start experiencing the the environmental crisis of of the earth, and if we don't think uh, about that, we will be dead. My children will be. So it's not in in two hundred years. It's it's my children now. So we need it's a it's a life or or, or death issue to fight those arguments that uh, uh, try to convince us that the poor people is poor because they don't work hard the rich people are rich because they were smarter or more intelligent or studied more uh, that that uh, kind of illusion of illusion uh, that the capitalism has in in the first place uh, showed like like a a desirable thing uh, now it's it's i think very confirmed that it doesn't deliver the, the capitalism doesn't deliver that kind of of well-being at least for for the for the for the many mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's something that here in, in argentina will again on the table will be again on the table i think uh, after this after this mega crisis that the coronavirus mm. has brought us. Thank you. Um, I think I'll just round up then with um, kind of, uh, I guess we've had a couple of questions that are kind of what, so what can people do now? <laughs> um, which, um, yeah, we've spoken a little bit about, but in, I guess, in part, and what can people do, I guess, right now? So, you know, what sort of campaigns, where can people put their energies? Um, and just, I guess, in lieu of the IMF disappearing tomorrow, um, yeah, what can what can people be doing? I think that is an answer that uh, every organization, every country, every trade union has to 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 bring itself. It's a, it's something that will not come from 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 up to down. It's something that will arise from the. We, we 
I, 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 I would never have imagined that uh, in the US, uh, a police state like the US uh, will be, uh, different cities will be dissolving their, their, their police offices because of the, of the racism and the, the, the fight against racism. Uh, this this reality opens new dreams, uh, new new frontiers, and that's something that that we need to take note for for the next years. I I I, I was uh, an activist when I was a student. I I was a, a a trade unionist when I worked in a in a paper, and and the paper ran ran out of money and stopped paying us. So. <laughs> Uh, when you when you're in a fight, you fight, and that's what you do. But when you are, uh, in, as in my case now, in 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 journalism or in divulgation and, and and that, you you only try to to give tools to people that that fight and and not not tell them what to do. Only only yeah, you know, that giving tools. That, that movie is a, that movie is a tool for that. Mm -hmm. Beverly, is there anything you would like to add? No, not really. I was just um, thinking, and particularly thinking about the, the connection with you know what's happening in the US today. I think many uh, um, many of the comments and many of the things that are happening right now are part of a, a recognition that the, the pandemic has made possible that indeed a lot of these very simple answers to very complex realities have shown uh, that they in fact don't work. Uh, you know, we, the market is not the solution. Capitalism doesn't provide for the common good. Uh, so there is, you know, there are a series of, of policies and, and programs uh, that even six months ago uh, seemed, uh, you know, kind of Martian to be talking about, like a universal income. So we need to, some of us are old enough to go back to 1968 and to think of all the students on the streets in, in Paris saying, you know, we have to dream the impossible. So putting up a good fight means that we do have to think outside the box uh, and we have to push for those, those changes. If we don't push, for an end to the IMF, it's going to continue. Mm. Uh, but you know, people in the UK, as well as people in Argentina and throughout Latin America, can can come to the conclusion, I think, fairly easily. You know, what does the IMF do for your good? Uh, it, it certainly is clear to everybody in Latin America, it's not there for our good. That conclusion has been reached a long time ago, and and we'll try to fight. Uh, a lot harder on this over the coming months because we think it's it's a particular opportunity to do that. Uh, we think the the call obviously for for stopping payments on illegitimate debts uh, needs to be carried forward not only in our country where well, we have a hard time uh, pressing that call. It's not that everybody agrees with us, or and certainly not that the government is is willing to to take that leap. But uh, we're going to continue to fight. For, for that because we think it's, it's, it's right, it's just, uh, and it's what we need. It's what we need to be able to do things differently. And so I think that there are lots of initiatives out there, certainly uh, you know better than we what's happening in the UK, but um, over the next few months, we'll be organizing a lot in Latin America to, to pressure uh, against this whole new, uh, a whole new form of indebtedness. I mean, you know, IMF coming back into the region in a massive way with all of the kinds of conditions that it mm. has, has always imposed. So we think it's, it's a good moment to, to join forces across the ocean, uh, around the world, uh, and the time is, is really right to make big changes because it's clear that as things are set up, they're not working for our good. And mm -hmm. the environmental crisis which is part of the debt crisis, it's part of our human rights crisis, is as Alejandro was saying, it certainly is going to continue to show us the limits of, of the way the world is functioning. And lots of young people are, are certainly aware of that. 
so mm -hmm. the fact that uh, that youth and that potential and those hopes and aspirations uh, are there, it's what keeps us all moving. And so it's, we may be pessimistic about the, the present realities and we may be pessimistic about the possibilities of change, um, but we have to have uh, the optimism of, of that hope that things can change, things can be different, they have to be different uh, if we're mm -hmm. all going to survive as a, as a human as humanity, as a humankind, uh, and for for there to be uh, relations among peoples uh, that are of solidarity and mutual support, and and not of uh, of rape and and pillaging. So mm -hmm. we're hopeful, and we know that uh, we count on you. Thanks. I think that's a really good, nice note to end on, and a really good reminder for people to kind of think big and kind of dream big, because I think we can definitely make some big changes. Um, but yeah, so I'll just, yeah, unless, Alejandro, unless there's anything final you would like to say, um, uh, I think, uh, yeah. Now I'm very happy to, to be here with you today. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad uh, of having received this, this invitation and really hope to, to be there to, to discuss when, you, when we can. These these ideas, uh, it it will be uh, it it will be necessary to to keep on working on the relationship between the IMF and Argentina in these years to come, and I will be. So we it, maybe without a movie, uh, without a specific uh, excuse, we can we can meet and and discuss in the future about this these ideas. Thank you very much. That sounds good. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the film. Um, the, lots of the comments were just, this is great. It's amazing. Thank you. So, and I great. really, really enjoyed it as well. Um, great. I assume, really I assume, really assume, on, like campaigning. So, <laughs> as, as, as you may have seen, the the uh, link, the YouTube link, has uh, subtitles in English, so you can share it with with whoever you want. It, we we wasn't supposed to do this before the pandemic because I, I was touring in, around universities and, and, and cities but we decided to open it uh, for, for everyone uh, in order to not to, to lose its power uh, because of these months. So you can share it with whoever you want. It will be soon with uh, Portuguese subtitles as well because I want to show it to my Portuguese friends there. And yeah, you can use it, you can uh, cut uh, parts, you can post it in, in media, you can use it as, as well, it's, it's everyone's now. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, thank you. Um, yeah, we'll make sure that's available. And thanks everyone for your questions. And sorry if we didn't get to some of them, um, we'll try and maybe go through and see if we can answer some uh, by email or something as well. So. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, that was great. Thanks, Joyce and Beverly and Alejandro. Um, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see you all next time. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Thank you from Action for Argentina.